All right, let's get let's get at it. I like that. We want to see that. We yeah. want people to know that our speedwalking team is about to beat everybody. Schefter, let's talk about some teams around the NFL. Dallas Cowboys situation. Uh On CD, you're talking? No, no. You just your eyes closed. I yep. thought you were gone. I thought you left us there for a second. <laughs> happy you are here. I'm here. Okay. I so, thought you were gone. No, no. Well, I'm happy that we're both here. That's good news for both Woo! of us. All parties are, are currently right. present. Yeah. Uh, back in the in the in the office studio you have at the house, better than in the car. We appreciate you joining us here. So let's go to the Dallas Cowboys. Clarence Hill reported uh, via uh, an interview of some sort where Jerry Jones talked about the future revenue of the NFL because of this Sunday ticket situation. Now this is being alluded to by a lot of people as being maybe a reason why Jerry Jones doesn't want to dump a bunch of upfront money to people at the current moment. Is that accurate? Is CD, Dak, Micah, Mike McCarthy, I mean, everybody seemingly is in a contract situation over there and Jerry's not spending. Why is that? What are we looking at? And and how does it all work out, you think, Shefty? Yeah, I, I don't believe that's why they haven't reached okay, deals good. with these people. Again, why is it that every other team in the league is signing players and they're not? So the Cowboys are going to lose wages here and not make certain amounts of revenue. The Dallas Cowboys, the cash printing factory, that's the Dallas Cowboys. And they don't have enough to pay their own players, but teams like the Dolphins and Packers and everybody else does. The Cowboys are cash poor all of a sudden. I don't think so. <laughs> well, then what is the deal? Well, How does it work out? Are they waiting to see? What do you think happens? I just think that they are in a tough situation. They have allowed themselves to be I think passive here this off season. And when you are reactive rather than active, you put yourself into difficult positions and they put themselves in a tough spot here all along with CD lamb. It would have been great to be out in front of it to get that deal done before some of these other wide receiver deals done. Now um, the thing here is that CD lamb was very smart. He wanted to wait for these other deals to get done because it was only going to elevate his market. Dak Prescott, is in a situation where it's just incredibly difficult for the Cowboys to negotiate with him because of essentially what they gave him in the past. They gave him the ability not to be tagged. They were the ones that franchised him twice before. They were the ones that have put themselves in a situation where now, if and when he hits the open market after the offseason, his price is going to be through the roof. He's going to set the record, highest paid player in NFL history. It's going to be a number that we haven't seen before in the National Football League. So to get Dak to do a deal now, you'd have to pay a ridiculous amount of money, a, num a number that the Cowboys haven't been willing to get to. And I think everybody, frankly, would be a little surprised at how high Dak's price climbs after the season if he remains unsigned. Mm -hmm. So, that's that deal. And Micah Parsons, that deal's not going down if he keeps playing the way he does. So they're just in a spot. I don't believe it's direct TV money or losses. They're just in a tough spot trying to re-sign guys that are hard to re-sign right now. All right, let's move away from Oxnard, California, and move to San San Santa Santa. San Clair, Santa, Santa Clara, Santa Clara. San, where, where's San Francisco at? The 49ers actually located. What is Santa Clara? Santa Clara, Santa Clara, yeah. Santa Clara. Yeah. yeah, San not, Barbara, great place. Yeah, not oh. San Francisco. Yeah, it's not. It's in yeah. Santa Clara. Yeah. Let's go to Santa Clara. Obviously, we know that. Um, How does this go? You know, yeah. So, anytime we ask you, you are literally the direction in which we just feel about it. Mm -hmm. Like going forward, especially with this particular team, not Eric, but this particular <laughs> team for sure. There was a site. Yep, we know. We know you know. No, but Pat, my job is to be like that with, you know, to cover every team in the league, not just one team. Like, oh, you're right. Either. Yeah, but this yeah, one. But this one, this we one, know, though. is at your top tier, though. This is a, through the Some years tiers. of us. Yeah. yeah, tiers. Through the years of us doing this particular program, we have, you know, gotten a chance to watch a lot of newsmakers and how it goes and overreacted to all of it, literally, whenever we were just on the internet in the basement to everything. Whenever you speak about the Niners, it's like here we. This is yep. this is it. There's a couple other insiders that have some places where it's like locked in, and you, you cover everybody incredibly. But when you speak about the Niners, we know it's a real deal. So with that being said, there was a video that popped up. Every team, every team like that. Where there was a video that popped up, where Ayuk showed up at practice. He was wearing a backpack. He had a Fox 40 uh, used it in. He had a backpack, sunglasses on. They get a do rag, white shirt, shorts. Like, we don't know if it was a planned visit, a surprise visit, a want to be there, a whole thing. 
Then we see John Lynch go talk to him in the video. Then they walk down the side. Then Ayuk walks like off the field kind of this way. And then they say that Lynch meets with him later. Where are we with the Ayuk San Francisco 49ers? Did John Lynch tell him like, hey, until we get this sorted, we don't want like how is the relationship between the two? And what are expectations for when this kind of all gets settled, if you will? It's a tough situation because the wide receiver market has exploded and has gone way north of what I think the 49ers were willing to go, which I think many people would agree that was a fair number, but Brandon I didn't like it. And so the window to get a deal done, I think, was greatly reduced when some of these other deals got done across the league and the numbers on these wide receivers rose. And so now Brandon Ayuk is in a situation where he wants a new deal, he's asked for a new trade, and it's tough for any of these things to happen right now. Because even if they were to go trade him, I think they'd have to take 70 cents on the dollar. And if they're trading him for 75 cents on the dollar, why are the 49ers who are in contention for a Super Bowl going to go do that season? They could always tag him as a franchise player and try to deal him, trade him at that point in time for value while having his services this year. Now, if you go to trade him to anybody, you could pick any wide receiver needy team across the league. Many of them could and would love to have Brandon Ayuk. There's no debate about that. But you've got to compensate the 49ers with something that's fairly rich. And then you've got to go pay a wide receiver in today's wide receiver market prices. So it's costly on both ends to make that deal. That's not to say that a deal couldn't happen. Sure, it could. But it's challenging to get done. And it's challenging to get a deal done with Brandon Ayuk when he's looking for top of the market prices for a wide receiver. So... What happens? I I don't know where it goes from here. I don't know that anybody knows where it goes from here because it's a tough spot to be in. Again, I I would say to you guys, what do you think Brandon Ike's contract should look like? You tell me. You look at all those wide receiver deals, and you tell me what you think would be fair. Okay, so I I think what would be fair would obviously depend upon what situation I am in because there's a lot of teams that would take Brandon Ayuk. Now, would they give up trade compensation that's big enough for the Niners and also pay him? Who knows? But whenever you, you know, you you think about, like, how do you end this situation? You go to the that, that, you go to the Saquon. I think everybody's Barkley. trying to figure that out. everybody's trying to figure that out right now. So I think you go to what Saquon Barkley ended up doing with the Giants, which was like throw out the deal pretty much and sign a one year deal. Um, instead of the franchise tag. And then normally that one-year deal, though, would have a no franchise tag thing Mm -hmm. tagged at the end of that. So the Niners would have to agree to not franchise tagging him after this season if they were to do that type of deal with Saquon. I think. I think that that is kind of how. And they bumped his money for one year a little bit. I think Austin Eckler had a similar situation where they bumped his money like 700000 where he was unhappy. It's just like without public... Amari Cooper just got a raise from the Browns, $5 million in incentives. They guaranteed half his money for this year, half the 20. Like, there are always things that you could do and adjust. And honestly, it's up to both sides to figure out what can they both live with and move forward doing here. That That's the whole key to the situation. And right now, I think everybody struggled to do that so far. We're not even a week into training camp. And so they're trying to piece it together. And, and in all honesty, I, I don't know that we've reached a critical point yet to where you feel like, oh boy, we've got to get this done. We're not even in August yet, right? The season doesn't open until September. And I think that there'll be a little bit more urgency to this deal and Tristan Wirfs in Tampa and Matthew Judon in New England and Jamar Chase in Cincinnati and C.D. Lamb in Dallas and every single unresolved contractual situation. I think that sometimes they get done right at camp and right at the start of camp. If they don't get done then, it feels like there's a little window here where there's some wiggle room where the urgency doesn't really kick in until we get a little bit later into camp. That's my own feeling. I can't prove that. There's nothing scientific behind that. But again, I think sometimes when you miss that initial window, there's nothing that pushes both sides to get it done until we're a little bit further into Well, it would make sense what you're saying because if you've ever seen the front office or the scouting department or the people that would be in the negotiation with a veteran player, 
first couple of days of training camp, they all want to see how their guys are doing. Mm-hmm. How are our rookies doing? How are the people that we scouted doing? GMs want to see how the draft class is doing, how the offensive lines may be gelling, how D-line's gelling. So this first like week of camp, there's a big like, hey, we want to see how this team is. So maybe there is a little bit of a distraction from getting business done because they're trying to see how the boys are doing that wanted to be there as opposed to those that don't want to be there. And it goes both ways, right? For the first padded practice today, Matthew Judon in New England, not practicing. Tristan Wirfs in Tampa, not practicing because the pads went on and they know that the risk is a little bit greater. And then the player can send a message by not being a part of practice. And it's the exact reason that the Packers got the deal done on Friday night before their very first padded practice on Saturday. Again, that's not a hard and fast deadline, but they don't want to start added practices on Saturday without their quarterback, just like these players in New England and Tampa. They don't want to be out there for a padded practice when there's money on the line. Jamar Chase in Cincinnati, as of last night, four straight days Four practices, no Jamar Chase. Now, Mm. I know that the Bengals are saying they have a plan, but I think Jamar Chase has got a plan too. And let's see how it plays out over time. Seems like he's executing it right now. Everybody's talking about T. Higgins, T. Higgins, T. Higgins. Jamar Chase is like, yeah, the reason why you're not paying T. Higgins is because, you know, Mm -hmm. you see, you got to. Hello. And and what did Brown, what did uh, owner Mike Brown say, Nick, in uh, interview about paying everybody? What did he say? Uh, basically he said, said that, go ahead, Chef. The, the all se- he said the all season is the time to do the deal, and that that they that they he said the die has been cast. Those were the that was the phrase he used. The die has been cast, and he made it sound like there wouldn't be a deal until after the season. Now again, we'll see that that's how he feels. That's how the team feels, and I'm sure the player will also have something to say about that. And what else did he say, Nick? He said something about being able to pay everybody, or was that kind of in ju- like what was the? Uh- yeah, it was insinuated saying he talked about the uh, salary cap being a pie, and that everyone needs a piece of the pie, and some pieces are bigger than others, and it's not going to be enough for everybody. <laughs> I'm intrigued because it's Cincinnati football, baby. Mm-hmm. We all know. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, like we've talked about this particular situation for the Cincinnati Bengals since Joe Burrow has gotten there and they've had success. It's like, hey, are the Cincinnati Bengals business wise going to be able to afford to pay everybody when in the past they haven't? But they do have an indoor facility. They do. Mm-hmm. They sold the, you know, they sold the naming rights to the stadium for the first time last yep. year. Smart. They're starting to do it. They understand what's at stake. Jamar, Jamar Chase, a big deal. Yeah, Jamar is going. He's going to be up in that. Jefferson range, you would assume. Now, Chef, you talked about IU. I think he's probably should be in that. He wants to be in that $30 million range, I'm sure. But Jamar probably going to be a guy to recess the market or wants to be in that conversation. Drafted top five, top six. Obviously, outplay, you know, that contract from day one. He's going to want that type of money. Yeah, and hey, Owner Brown also said in that, uh, in that interview, can't just pay people willy-nilly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, just, and, and well. listen, and Chase has got, he's got this year left on his deal, and he's got the fifth-year option. So if you're the Bengals, you're saying, well, you got two years left. But if you're Jamar Chase, you're saying, well, I got a million dollars in base salary this year and I got three point eight million dollars in a roster bonus. So I make four point eight million dollars and I got my friend, a wide receiver, friends across the making a lot more than that. Now, again, I asked the players on the set, Pat, AJ, Darius, if you're in a situation how would you handle it? I'm just asking you that question. Yeah. I signed a franchise tag immediately upon getting it offered, so I don't know if I'm yeah. the right guy because I was a punter. But if I'm Jamar Chase, <laughs> yeah. I would uh, certainly – I could see Jamar Chase's side of this whole thing, but does he know he's a bangle? Like, mm-hmm. this is uh, – How it goes. T. Higgins just kind of acknowledged it. Like, this is how this goes over here. Maybe Jamar's the one to change it over there, though. Maybe Jamar's mm-hmm. the one to change it. Go ahead, AJ. AJ's got a question for you, Shefty. Hey, Chef, do you have any insight on what's going on with the New York Jets and Hassan Reddick? Uh, he seems like he's, uh, you know, piling up some discretionary fines from the team that could possibly, uh, you know, come to. But are, is he any closer to showing up? Are they going to get a deal done? They've, they've been talking, and it certainly sounds like there's been some progress. And I think I'd be surprised if they didn't figure out a way to get this one solved sooner rather than later. But he hasn't reported today. Doesn't sound like right now he's reporting today. Uh, again, he's got one year left on his deal. This shouldn't be hard to figure out again. You know, you sweeten this deal. You let him get to free agency if that's something that he could live with. But he hasn't shown up there during training camp. This is a great defense. They'd be even better with him on it. It's the Eagles trade him. He still hasn't shown up. Didn't show up all during mandatory minicamp. 
again, I think the two sides have been working together. They've been talking, but the Jets' stance has been, hey, we're not going to do anything for a player who is holding out until he's in camp. And the player's like, well, I'm not reporting to camp without you doing anything. And so that's the holdup. So I think the best way to sign this is, hey, listen, give me an idea of what you're thinking. Okay, you lay it out there. Player comes into camp. And once he's in camp, you know from the team that there is a good faith effort to know that they're going to get it done. And if they don't, then it's a problem for everybody. But again, I think there's got to be an understanding there for the two sides to be able to work together and work through this together so he can get into camp so that defense can reach its maximum potential. What an interesting start to his Jets career here for Hassan Reddick from Philadelphia Eagles. I, I don't know how it's going to all work out, but Coach Sala said before uh, mandatory, we know he's working. He's a, he's a good player. Oh, yeah. Been around a long time. Hopefully they can settle the business off the field so we can watch that defense hunt. Speaking of that defense hunting, allegedly – Rogers got his uh, foot stepped on by Cleet today. Oh, no. Was not happy. Was not happy. Really? Plus, he was telling Garrett Wilson, when you see a corner and you see a safety, you need to do this. Garrett was saying, well, I see this, I do this. And they were saying, nah, you need to do this. And then they dap up, then they connect. Drama. Yeah, a little uh -oh. bit. A little bit. <laughs> Classic chess. <laughs> Aaron's up fiery today, they mm -hmm. said. It's like, oh, he got his foot. Did you ever get your foot stepped on? Think about Cleet now. Yeah, spikes. Yeah. That is miserable. In an NFL lineman. And if you're a quarterback and getting your foot stepped on, something happened, you know, that you could probably also be pissed off about. And it's interesting that I wonder if Aaron was like this last year because Aaron pretty like, hey, we're holding things accountable. This is how we operate. This is how this whole thing goes. Just like Peyton was, just like Tom was, mm -hmm. just like Michael Jordan was, just Most like good, good athletes are. <laughs> everybody that is in a position of leadership that has been great throughout the history is like, hey, this is how this goes. This needs to work. But I guess since he's a hippie, right, people don't expect that. People are acting like this is big news. Aaron and Wilson getting after it. it's like, yeah, if they disagree, Heck, that's going to happen. With, anything with Aaron is going to be big news, especially in the early part of training camp. You're right, it you're just right, is. You're right, you're right. He can do or say anything. He could be hot about having his foot stepped on. He could have words with Garrett Wilson there on the sideline. Anything he does or says is going to be a headline in New York at all times. Just the way it is. Yeah, he knows but, that. But we just want people to know. Hey, that's like great football. Right? That, that is, this is a good thing out of practice, not a bad thing. Great right? thing. Yeah, whenever whenever this hit the internet, I was like, this is good. This is not bad because they're actually communicating with each other and getting it sorted. So when you're on the same page, now all of a sudden we're rolling. This is great, not bad. I, I was intrigued to see how it's kind of taken. There's a lot of guys still available in that free agency world. Good, D. Yeah, a lot of pretty good DBs out there. Quandre Diggs, yeah. Fon Gilmore, Xavier Howard. He's healthy now. And on uh, top of that list for me, at least, is Justin Simmons. I think I just saw him on the top 100 in the top 60, I believe. Uh, any, you know, hearing anything about where some yep. of these guys can end up, where, what teams they can end up on? Yeah, I think in a case like Justin Simmons, it's a case where – uh, he's been talking with teams, and he's gotten interest. And I think it's the type of thing where he could opt to do a deal right now, or he could wait until there may be a team that loses a safety in camp and at that point in time feels an even greater sense of urgency to step up and pay him. But you know, to me, at some point in time, I wouldn't be surprised if a team like the Saints made a move at safety. Like They're still looking for a little bit of help. There's a lot of safeties out there. I could see the Saints being a potential home for one of these safeties at some point in time. That wouldn't surprise me all that much. But he's been talking, Justin Simmons has, and, and we'll see what happens with him in the future here. We appreciate the hell out of you, Shefty. Keep killing it, brother. We're about – hey, how many days away are we from football? We are 38 days from NFL football, 27 hey. from college football. Let's go. 30, wait, hold on. Hold on. There's a game on ESPN on Thursday night. Now, I know it's preseason. Oh, yeah. I know the guys aren't, you know, to be like a glorified scrimmage, but it's still football Thursday night on ESPN, right? Hall of Fame speeches this weekend. That's right. Come we on. Got a lot happening.